So hi, my name is Alexei. I'm one of the two co-founders of Interlay, and I'm going to talk about how Bitcoin is revolutionizing DeFi in a trustless manner. Now, 14 years ago, Bitcoin started as a vision, a vision of trustless, decentralized, and transparent financial ecosystems. Now, 14 years later, we actually have achieved that. We have decentralized finance. We have much more, though. We have NFTs, which revolutionize, which revolutionize how we view ownership. We have the metaverse, which changes how we interact with one another. We have decentralized identity systems, and so much more. But there is one issue. There is a chasm between adoption and innovation. Bitcoin, to this date, is the main driver of crypto adoption worldwide. And the reason for this is probably because it is so simple. And it's more than just a cryptocurrency, it is a vision. If you look at other countries, legislations where people perhaps do not trust the government currency, you will see that mostly they are worried about Bitcoin and that's what they know about. And if you think about yourself, how did you get involved in crypto? Most of you will have started with Bitcoin. So there is, however, a controversy. When you have Bitcoin, you cannot do anything else with it than payments. Well, you can, but then you have to go to a centralized exchange, which defeats the entire purpose of BDC itself. So what we think is fair to say is there is no true Bitcoin DeFi out there. And that is, of course, a problem. And this is essentially Intelli's mission. Our goal is to unlock the full potential of Bitcoin in a decentralized global ecosystem. Bitcoin everywhere trustless, decentralized, on any chain, directly from your wallet. Now, before we move on, for those of you who like numbers, Bitcoin's TVL, in terms of market cap, is 10 times the size of the entire DeFi TVL. And of that, $5 billion is actually wrapped BTC on Ethereum, which is a centralized copy of Bitcoin. You have to trust BitGo that they will actually secure the BDC. And while this works so far, we've learned over the past couple of weeks that trusting centralized providers is not always a good idea. And if you start looking for actual trustless Bitcoin DeFi, it's very hard to find. It's fragile, and it barely exists in practice. And what we believe is that Bitcoin DeFi, the market for this, is still untapped, and it will be multi-chain. And the solution that we have built is a trustless, multi-chain Bitcoin-backed asset. Now, the concept is very, very simple. You lock Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain, you mint a wrapped representation into BDC on Polkadot, and then you can use it across all those new applications in a fully decentralized manner. And then you can go back. Whenever you're done using it, you can go back to Bitcoin. Now, it sounds simple, and it is very simple to use, but building this in a fully decentralized manner is actually not so simple. Now, we start by decentralizing, by decentralizing. Instead of having one provider who holds the Bitcoin, we allow anyone to become a so-called vault. Vaults lock up collateral, and this collateral serves as the insurance that they will not lose your Bitcoin. Because imagine if, if a vault would be a random person on the internet, it's probably not the best idea to send them your BDC. You want some security, you want some assurance. And Intel uses the same concepts that actually make Bitcoin work in practice, incentives. We disincentivize misbehavior and incentivize vaults to do what they should be doing, securing Bitcoin and returning it to you when you want to go back to the Bitcoin blockchain. So as a user, you send BTC to one or more vaults. This locks up the vault's collateral. And then you can use Bitcoin, specifically IBTC, across the DeFi ecosystem. And when you want to go back, in the normal scenario, you will receive your Bitcoin back. One or more vaults will return the BTC to your Bitcoin wallet while you destroy this wrapped asset. However, should the vaults lose the Bitcoin or steal it, they will be liquidated and their collateral will be automatically taken away and used to reimburse you as a user. So in the worst case scenario, you might not get your Bitcoin back, but you will get back this collateral in a basket of different assets, and this will allow you to go back and purchase Bitcoin. In practice, however, there will be bots and arbitrage traders who do this for profit. And the only thing you will see as a user is that it might take a bit longer to get the actual Bitcoin out of the system. 
So let's reiterate, why is this actually secure? It's secure because it's radically open. Anyone can join the system and become a vault. It's censorship resistant. Vaults cannot prevent you from minting IBTC by design. And last but not least, it's governed by a decentralized system from day one. There is no gradual decentralization. There is no promise to decentralize. It's decentralized from the start. And the second aspect is that it's, it's secured by insurance. This means that you will get your BDC back, or in the worst case, you will be reimbursed in collateral. And this is the best guarantee that you can ever get for wrapped assets. In addition, the system is open source, it adheres to best practice standards, and it has been audited by industry leaders. We have a 200-page specification that we plan to use for formal verification down the road. In addition, it's based on top-tier peer-reviewed research, and we, it has been reviewed by communities such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, Cosmos, Solana, and the agreement is that this is indeed the best and the most secure way to get Bitcoin into DeFi. So, but what does this mean for you as a user? Let's take a step back. IntraBDC, if you think about it, is to Bitcoin what DAI is to the dollar, but better. IntraBDC is an asset-backed stablecoin that is pegged to the price of Bitcoin, but in addition, it can be physically redeemed. With DAI, you don't have the guarantee that, that you can actually get an actual US dollar for it. And what this gives you as a user are two main use cases. On one hand, you can hodl. This means that Interlay is a decentralized, fully insured custody network. So if you don't want to hold your Bitcoin on an exchange, which I think we can all agree by now is not the best idea, but you're also not as familiar with the technology that you could self-custody, have a hardware wallet or paper wallet and so on, you can mint IntraBTC, and you will know that your Bitcoin is insured and secured by a decentralized network. And if this network loses your Bitcoin, you will be automatically reimbursed. No other solution for custody gives you such a guarantee. But then, once you have IBTC, which is short for IntraBTC, you can also use it across a DeFi ecosystem. You can onboard into new networks. So instead of trying to buy a new token that is perhaps used to pay fees in a new network, you can get Bitcoin, which you can get on all reliable exchanges. Right? You have to, at some point, enter the Web3 world. You have to go from fiat into crypto, and typically this is done through Bitcoin. But once you have BTC, you never will have to touch a centralized provider again. And then, of course, you can pay with BTC, you can use it to trade against other DeFi assets, you can borrow, lend, do whatever you want without trusting anybody else. Now, Interlay is built as a Polkadot Parrot chain. Why? Because this allows us to be scalable, robust, and modular. Substrate was modular before it was cool. On our Parrot chain, we're able to build things like importing Bitcoin libraries. This may not sound so cool, right, as a product, but when you think about it, we don't have to re-implement Bitcoin's core security primitives. We can reuse parts of the Bitcoin core code in our parachain, which, of course, reduces the risk of attacks. Interlay itself has a dual network strategy. We have Interlay as the main parachain and Kintsugi as our canary network on Kusama, which is already live, and that's where all the cool experimentation is going to happen. And from Polkadot and Kusama, IBTC, is going to be available on all major chains. Because the idea here is to be inclusive. Bitcoin should be usable by everyone everywhere. And the goal is to make Polkadot the hub for Bitcoin interoperability. Now, if we briefly look at competitors, Bitcoin DeFi has been something that people tried to solve over and over for multiple years now. But what they ended up doing is building centralized services yet again. You have RapidTC in the far left corner at the bottom, which are centralized services, essentially. It's traditional finance, which tells you that you, you can get Bitcoin back, but you never know. And then you have Bitcoin sidechains, which unfortunately still rely on trusted bridges to actually get access to BTC. They might benefit from Bitcoin security, but the Bitcoin asset itself is still centralized. In the top left, you have multi-chain bridges. Now, some of them also offer you Bitcoin products, but actually they're not direct competitors. And you can put Axelar, Nomad, Multichain, Anyswap, all of them into the far left corner. And if you want to, actually, you, we can collaborate with them. You can use IBTC and all of these bridges to move into new ecosystems if there is no decentralized bridge available. 
So Interlay positions itself in the far right corner at the top right of being multi-chain and trustless. And that's the main vision. Now let's talk about vaults, which are the heart of the system. As a vault, if you're an operator, you put up collateral, and this is the insurance that you give to the user that you will not steal from them. And then you secure Bitcoin while people are using it in DeFi. When people want to go back, you send the BDC back to the user, and in parallel, you also maintain the peg. Our system does not know whether you will be honest or not. We cannot, unfortunately, trust you. Even if we think that you'll be honest, our system does not know. The only thing that the system will look at is your collateralization rate. And if you're under collateralized, the system will have to take measures and liquidate you, because in theory, if the collateral is worth less than the Bitcoin you're holding, you could be incentivized to steal. And that can never happen. So that's essentially the risk that you have. However, this risk is quite similar to any DeFi protocol, and it's nothing new. Now, the question is, why run a vault? Apart from potentially altruistic reasons of helping people use BTC with new applications and helping grow the ecosystem by bringing Bitcoin liquidity into Dotsama, you actually also have an economic component, like every crypto system. You earn rewards, earned, uh, paid an inch BTC for mint and redeem fees. You can act as a protocol policeman and liquidate malicious actors in return for collateral payouts. And you can actually use Stake, liquid staking assets as collateral. So you could use Akala's LKL dot, for example, earn staking rewards, and in addition, have exposure in Interlay and be a part of the Interlay network. But as every new system, we cannot start charging users very high fees from the start. The goal is to make this accessible, allow people to bring BTC into the system, and make it very easy and cheap for them. So at the start, there's a subsidy where the DAO treasury pays out vault operators in the native asset, and this we also gives the people that are operating the network the control over the voting power, and hence make sure that the people who actually have a stake in the network are also the ones who help determine its future. Now, talking about the next steps. Big conference is always good to make announcements, alpha leaks. So right now, we are live on Kintsugi with our Canary network, KBTC, the Bitcoin version of IBTC, uh, the Kusama version of InterBTC is already live on Kusama. It is integrated with Moon River and Karura. Interlay, the network itself, is already live and it is 100% decentralized. So essentially, we have everything to launch. And in fact, all systems are ready. And I'm happy to say that we are in the final stages of launching IBTC. Everything is good to go. The last thing that needs to be done is for the community to press the button. In parallel, we are already opening XCM channels to Akali and Moonbeam. And until the rest of the year, the goal is to have IBTC on all other parachains. In addition, our goal is to start expanding beyond Polkadot. Bitcoin needs to be available everywhere. And to really fulfill this vision, we need to grow. And we need to make it available to whomever wants to use it. And in parallel, the goal is to really double down on improving the product, working with our early, early adopters to make sure we're building exactly what the people want. And then in 2023, the goal is really to integrate with the top DeFi protocols, make sure that we have Bitcoin, specifically IBTC in all major networks, and really start fighting this David versus Goliath battle, which we will have against big providers like WBDC. Now, because it is an interesting conference, we'll also give a few alpha leaks. So apart from the core product, we've also been working on some quite interesting things. IntraBTC is already the most decentralized and secure way to use Bitcoin in DeFi. It's decentralized custody with multi-collateral insurance. And this is, however, targeted at DeFi users. Why? Because it gives you the flexibility to do with Bitcoin whatever you want in whatever dApp. Now, the interesting part is that most people don't use DeFi for day trading, right? Typically, and or, or very often, you will lock up an asset in some protocol and leave it there untouched for a couple of days, weeks, months. And we can capitalize on this to take a step further in Bitcoins or in the bridge's security. We can make it non-custodial. We found a way how we can potentially allow you to keep the Bitcoin in your wallet and still allow you to use it in DeFi. And this product is targeted not at DeFi experts, because of course there is always a trade-off. It does not, it, you cannot use it in any DeFi protocol. We need to build custom integrations. But what you will have as a user is one app where you can have a few selected protocols, and within one click, you can 
deposit BTC that you have in your wallet and that stays in your wallet and nobody can ever steal it from you into a few DeFi protocols. How this works under the hood is we use L2 style commit chains or, or rollups as, as people also call them and we put them onto Bitcoin and use our cross-chain proofs to make sure that we replicate the logic also on the Polkadot side. We re released a paper a few weeks ago. You can read up on the technical details. But what this allows us to do, if it works, and this is a moonshot project, but if we get this to work at scale, this will change how people use BTC. It will allow us to target not only the traders, the DeFi users, but the broad group of Bitcoin holders who actually are very, very afraid of giving away custody and very conservative in terms of how they use Bitcoin. This will allow them to actually gain access to the DeFi ecosystem in a very secure manner. Now, however, DeFi users are still very, very important, and for them, we also have something new. One observation that we have made from Shinsugi and also other at Bitcoin assets is that very often when you bridge Bitcoin into DeFi, you don't actually go back. You stay in DeFi because you can do so much more on other chains than on Bitcoin. And this raises the question, do we always need to have 100% of the Bitcoin locked on the Bitcoin blockchain while people are using RapidTC in DeFi? Because that's the case in the current system. There's always Bitcoin locked, and if people try to move it away, they're liquidated. So the idea that we are looking at right now in modeling is to create a market-driven mechanism for redemption. The idea would be to pair synthetic assets, similar basically like the DAI stablecoin, with actual people providing physical Bitcoin on the Bitcoin chain. So think of it this way. You could mint BTC, or let's call it synthetic Bitcoin, by providing collateral. You get exposure to the BTC asset, you can use it in DeFi, but you still have a way to actually go to the Bitcoin chain and redeem it. And this is where the current system would come in and provide you with the actual Bitcoin on the BTC chain in return for a profit. And this market driven mechanism makes it very lucrative for people who actually run the infrastructure, who provide you with the service of get sourcing the Bitcoin and training it for the synthetic asset, while still making it very easy for non-techies to get access to BTC and DeFi. And by combining the best of both worlds, we think that this is the way we can build a system that scales far beyond any other Bitcoin DeFi attempt before. And with that, I think I'm actually a bit faster than, I ha than the time I had, but thanks so much. Do check out our website. And last but not least, we have a questionnaire going on. We're trying to understand which Bitcoin DeFi use cases people want. And by participating, you get the chance to win a ticket to the Bitcoin Amsterdam conference in October and actually have a chance to talk to people who, building on, who are building on Bitcoin. So scan the QR code, check it out, because we want to know what you guys want to have for Bitcoin. Thanks so much. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Alexi. Um, you, you answered the question, it was how can they get involved, and then you, your last Perfect. slide said it. But uh, if there's anything you'd like to add on how people can I, no, I stay up to date with your project. Great, I, thank you so thanks much. Thanks so much.